Hello, today we're looking at investigating the rate of anaerobic respiration in yeast. So before we begin, just make sure you can recall the equation for anaerobic respiration in yeast, and then go from there. Now, how do we do this? Most of the time, we're going to be varying different temperatures to look at one different factor like temperature. Um, but the important thing is the setup and how to make the whole the results really precise by the use of a gas syringe. Okay, so the main idea is we've got a flask, we have yeast all woken up and ready to go. I pour some yeast into the flask. I pour all the yeast in really. So these guys are now inside here. We have yeast and glucose and some water. So they're basically in a very happy environment for themselves. We want to deprive them of oxygen. Why? Anaerobic. Okay. Remember, with anaerobic respiration in yeast, we get carbon dioxide coming through. Therefore, we deprive them of oxygen by putting a layer of oil on the very top. I shall add this gently to the top of it. As you can see, the oil then covers that completely. Now this layer of oil on top of the yeast should prevent any oxygen from going through it in that way because there's not that much pressure. However, any carbon dioxide generated by the yeast will come through it and it, we will then be able to collect it there. Now that that's on, we then need to put that into the water bath of different temperatures. So supposing we were investigating the rate due to temperature, we would then have water bath at different temperatures. Water bath thermometer, yeast in. We are then going to allow the yeast to rest in here for 15 minutes so it acclimatizes to that temperature. Because if we took the reading now, it wouldn't be the accurate representation of the yeast at that temperature. Okay, So that's what we do. We let wait for 15 minutes to acclimatize in that temperature, then we go for it. See you in 15 minutes. Fifty minutes have passed, so I'm now going to bring this over. So this is my measurement at 35 degrees. So the water bath has remained at 35. I'm now going to put this through. And then as the carbon dioxide comes through, we should then get movement in the gas syringe. Don't forget to start the timer, obviously. You can see I've prepared my results table, and I can see then, after every two minutes, the volume of carbon dioxide that's produced in there. I'll see you in 10 minutes. So as you can see, we now have an increased amount of carbon dioxide, volume of carbon dioxide filling our gas syringe there. Um, we can then do several things. We can either repeat this experiment as is in order to improve the reliability of these values because we repeated the experiment at the same conditions. Or if we want to test different temperatures and see the effect on rates, we can then change the temperature of the water bath and then run the experiment again and then look at how temperature affects the production of carbon dioxide and so we can look at that. So there you have it and it's over to you now to graph it. <laughs>